You know, whenever I see a video on SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, usually the person making that video pretends they're in a SpongeBob episode. Like with the French narration and the outfit. It's cute and all. It's also really stupid. Which is why I am going to do nothing of the sort. I am a unique, prestigious, college-educated individual who does not succumb to trends. So do not think for one second that I am going to- <sighs> Barnacles. I don't have a red tie. Now you're probably wondering, why, out of all the games they could have remade, did they decide to remake some licensed Spongebob game? Well, Boomer, I'm glad you asked. In 2003, Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom graced our PS2s, Xboxes, and GameCubes. But this was not just a mere cash grab from publisher THQ, no. Developer Heavy Iron Studios took the best elements from 3D platformers of the 90s and also took what made Spongebob a cultural icon and put it in this game. As a result, people in my age group look fondly upon Battle for Bikini Bottom as it is one of the defining examples of a great licensed video game. Which means it's decent. Look, I have fond memories of this game in the same way I have fond memories with Sonic Adventure 2 and the Chamber of Secrets. But as you get older and you start to play more and frankly better games, you realize that these games that you had as a child are still good, but not as good as you'd remember. Still, I have a bunch of great things to say about Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, as well as some tartar sauce, if you will. What do you think, Gary? Meow. I am talking to a snail. The story in this game is as complicated as you'd expect. With all the money and resources he's gained from having a failed business, Plankton builds a machine that creates an army of robots to steal the Krabby Patty formula and probably terrorize the city of Bikini Bottom in the process. He certainly became a modern-day Dr. Robotnik. As he begins to create the robots, they start to turn on him for some unknown reason. I wonder what that could be. God bless this franchise. While this is all happening, Spongebob and Patrick are playing with their toy robots. Thinking it would be fun to play with real robots, Patrick puts the toy into a magic conch and they wish for real robots to play with the next day. Oh, how shellfish of you! Daddy? Sure enough, they get their wish, as Plankton's robots then run amok throughout Bikini Bottom, terrorizing the citizens and causing unspeakable damage. The survivors of these unfortunate events would go on to call this tragedy, Judgment Day. After this, the story doesn't really matter, as you spend the rest of the game helping out characters with situations that may or may not be directly related to the robots. Like, there's a mission where you go to the top of a mountain to fight King Jellyfish, also Squidward can rub some ointment on his stings. Oh, Spongebob, you do too much for someone who wouldn't do the same for you. One thing I love about this game is the signature Spongebob humor we've come to recognize from the show's episodes. And I mean the good episodes that came out before the first movie. And now back to your regular programming, Retirement Home Girls Gone Wild! What's this game rated? The game uses the same audio and music from the original, which includes the cartoon's voice cast. Well, most of them, anyway. You gotta help me, boy! The Krusty Krab's been overrun by a bunch of them hoodlum robots of yours. Man, I was really hoping they'd bring back Clancy Brown for Mr. Krabs. You just can't replace greatness. Regardless, one of my favorite improvements in this remake are the character animations, which are a huge upgrade from the stilted ones in the original. I mean, just look at these shots of Plankton side by side. Not even close. Of course, this means the game's visuals have received a massive upgrade without losing what made them special. I feel as if some remakes lose the charm of their originals by changing too much, but Battle for Bikini Bottom retains the style and makes areas I thought were rather dull now a sight to behold. It honestly makes me never want to go back to the original. I also had to play this game on Xbox One X, because I heard the Switch port doesn't look or run too great, and because I played this on my friend Alan's account. You should check out his Twitch channel, he's only slightly cringy. Here we go! On the rails! You know, it's time to Yeah, I file shared. So what? I'm a cheapskate. I can't help it. Even then, this game is only $30, so I'm bound to pick it up at some point. That's why I'm a little lenient on the flaws it has, because it's so cheap. And also, because of that, if this was a $60 release, I'd probably be disappointed if I bought it. 
For one, they couldn't even get the hand to function properly. How do you mess that up? Joking aside, this remake is extremely faithful to the original game. For better and for worse. There were times where I forgot I was playing a remake because it plays and feels exactly like the original. They made some minor adjustments here and there, but it's still Battle for Bikini Bottom, plain and simple. My only complaints about the gameplay are that hit detection doesn't work as well as you'd want it to at times, and there are some really tight platforms that are hard to jump on. Not many though. I think this game's biggest weakness, however, is that it's a remake of a licensed video game from 2003. Games like these had a limited budget and could only put in so much content. Battle for Bikini Bottom is a collectathon platformer in the same vein as Banjo Kazooie and Super Mario 64. More so Banjo Kazooie because you don't get warped back to the hub world every time you collect a golden spatula. Golden spatulas are the key collectible in this game, and you'll use them to unlock more areas toward progression. There are other missions where you collect other items like steering wheels, museum paintings, Patrick's filthy socks, you know, typical collectible stuff. The most common ones you'll find are shiny objects, which you can use to unlock alternate paths and trade Mr. Krabs for more golden spatulas. However, you won't be doing as much collecting as you will be fighting robots. I say fight, but I really mean pressing the attack button, though some of them require special moves to kill. You can throw stuff at them with Patrick, lasso them with Sandy, or use SpongeBob's bubble missiles to blow them to smithereens. What really hurts Battle for Bikini Bottom is its lack of content. It doesn't take too long to 100%, and when you're done with it, you're done with it. There's really not much of a reason to go back. While I did enjoy my time with this game, as I got closer to the end, I thought, wow, there really isn't that much to this game, which is probably why they priced it at $30. Even if you've played other 3D platformers, chances are you won't like this game as much if you don't have any nostalgia for it or you aren't a fan of SpongeBob. Heck, a big reason why I like Battle for Bikini Bottom is because you get to explore Bikini Bottom. You get to tour SpongeBob's house, the downtown area, the Blue Lagoon, all the iconic areas of the show. It really makes going through the rather basic gameplay all the more worth it. Though I wish they could have done more to make it feel less dated. Maybe add more single player content instead of, I don't know, this boring multiplayer. I only played one round of this horde mode and all I could think was, why did they waste their time making this? Why couldn't they have used their time and budget to add more content to this game or focus on making the single player better? I don't know, this just didn't feel necessary to me. In spite of its flaws, I still enjoyed this remake but I totally understand why not everyone liked it. It's mainly meant to cater to the fans who already have nostalgia for this game and are just Spongebob fans in general, like me. But hey, it's only 30 bucks, which means it's gonna have a sweet sales price later down the line. If this game was $60, no doubt I would be way more harsh on it. But they priced this game fairly, and if you liked this game as a kid, I'd recommend picking up this remake. I think you're gonna like it. Okay, the game's all complete, and I think it's time to kick back, relax, and catch up on some good old TV. I'll see you guys later. Go! Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video here on Ferris Wheel Pro. A very special thanks goes to my Patreon supporters, including Justice to Free, Stephanie Ferris, Smash JT, and a new Patreon supporter, Sean Long. If you like the video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to know when I upload another one. In the meantime, this has been Ferris Wheel Pro, and I will see you all on the next ride.